everybody, welcome back inside the stash. So this is the second part of the uh, what's in the box sort of videos that we do, the, uh, the videos of stuff that I've gotten in. Oh, I'm disturbing my poor sleeping cat. Um, so we're going to have to put him someplace here in a second. But uh, I, I would, I've would i been meaning to make this video now for quite a while. I've gotten even more stuff in than I had before I needed to make this video before. So uh, apologies in advance if this ends up being incredibly long. But I, I need to film this um, just because I, I, I need to put the stuff someplace. And it's obviously not where it belongs. Just hanging out surrounding me basically as it were. So we're going to uh, look at one thing here real quick with the camera on this angle and then we are going to spin it around and try to plow through it as quickly as possible. So uh, for people who don't watch our regular stash port videos for whatever reason you're missing out but that's your choice. Uh, this is Cooper. He is the new shop cat who doesn't appreciate my goatee hitting his delicate delicate lilac Siamese ear when I'm talking. Poor, poor thing. Um, he, he's transitioning out of the port where he was, you know, sleeping in one room and having all of his stuff in one room and, and being away from the dog and the cat and everything else to being ruler of the house. And uh, he was sleeping on my chair when I came down here. Must have realized that, uh, you know, his human would return to the, to the seat eventually. So, at any rate, um, apologies for big hands in the way because i got to reach around behind the camera for what I'm trying to get here. Ugh. I ordered these, uh, this off of eBay. This came as basically an entire um, set. I don't think Tommy sells it this way necessarily, but it was the way that it's packaged by this Japanese hobby shop. And <clears throat> excuse me, for the price of what it was, uh, I thought it was a reasonably good deal considering. <coughs> Uh, just because, you know, it included shipping and everything else. I'm trying to see if there's a yen price on these that uh, will tip me off. I don't think these have. Oh, there they are. So, let's see. This was, if you buy these, work, work to be able to buy these in Japan, this would run you probably about, um, let's see, 2000 3, this run you about 30, 30 bucks or so, and I think I paid forty-two dollars shipped. So you know, it's it's what it is plus the shipping. So it worked out to be pretty much on par. And what that was was a set of the three uh, Tamiya polishing compounds. I realize that's upside down, but you have the coarse, the fine, and the finish. So there's those. Uh, it came with the what they call the compound applicator, which are three. Uh, I'm gonna guess like microfiber. Uh, cloths, and while they're not necessarily anything probably special about that, they do come to, you see down here, they are uh, pink, blue, and white, which if you uh, notice, correspond to the colors of the compound. Now that's not necessarily anything special, not like you have to use the white cloth with the white compound, but it is sort of a, uh, hey stupid, keep your cloth straight type of thing, where you just use the cloth the same color as the compound, and then you don't accidentally put, you know, coarse on when you meant to put finish on by using the, the blue one instead of the pink one or whatever. Uh, these are washable. Um, you, you don't not, you're not supposed to wash it with other laundry, but you can, uh, you know, wash it uh, by hand. And then uh, also included was the a package of Tamiya modeling wax, which is, you know, sort of just a carnival wax type of deal with its own applicator. So again, you won't get anything confused. Um, and again, the little applicator is uh, washable. It says not to wring it out, which is kind of interesting because like how else would you wash it? But <laughs> it be as it may, I got those three, three, or, you know, two, however you want to look at it, uh, finishing things for my uh, builds. I had uh, used the micro mesh compound it's a polishing compound sort of deal out of the micro mesh kit on the z4 and uh you know it's just it's meant to polish out uh lexan glass the whole the whole point of the of the micro mesh polishing kits 
They sell them to hobbyists, but originally they were designed to polish out Lexan airplane glass. So, like, if your Cessna 182 got its windshield scratched up, you would use the micro mesh polishing kit along with the polishing compound to polish the windshield out in order to, you know, make it clear again. So that's the whole point of the, what the micro mesh things are, why they're fake grits, as some people like to call the 12,000 as being a fake grit and stuff like that. And again, that's less to do with, you know, the it's, a, it's a really a 12,000 grit piece of sandpaper as much as it is, you know, it's just an ease for the, per, the people using it. You know, the higher the number, the finer the, the grit is. But be that, you know, so uh, that polishing compound was not quite as coarse as I would have liked it to be for, for certain things I was trying to do with that kit in terms of uh, trying to accidentally polish off some of the overspray that I did when I uh, put the window, uh, not the window, but the uh, front and rear grill, and actually the window surrounds as well, put airbrush that stuff on. I, of course, I didn't tape the body completely over. I should have used my other airbrush for that and anyway. Um, instead of using the one with a finer needle and a smaller amount of paint rather than using the sort of the all-purpose one, which did the job, but it just put out a little bit more paint than I needed it to and oversprayed into the couple of areas where I hadn't taped the body completely into a, you know, into a coffin, as it were. So I was polishing the, that overspray out, and I could have just used something that was a little, had a little bit more oomph to it. it basically, I think it, it's going to, the micro mesh thing it polishes out to the 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 fine and not the finish, sort of the middle of those three. So I'm gonna, I'm anxious to get something painted up um, and use those and see how they work. So anyway, um, we're gonna spin the camera around, adjust our cat. As adorable as he is, I'm also now his bathtub. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, get ourselves situated here. And uh, we're going to try to, like I said, plow through all of this mess as fast as possible. So we're back in a fla hot flash in a cat bathtub. All right, so we picked up stuff from everywhere. This is going to have a Hobby Link Japan. It's going to have Hobby Search. There's going to be a uh, spot model, um, local hobby shop pickups. Um, the stuff I got at NNL East is still not shown yet. So we're just going to... there's going to be very little rhyme or reason to this, so just be bear with me. One of the things we picked up from Spot Model, obviously, giant Spot Model sticker, are these little Rothmans uh, logos down here. These, if the, there we go, uh, are used on the Hasegawa Lancia 037 for use in their uh, tour de course decals. Now, I'll show you that in a second because I've got a, a couple of tour de course uh, kits that I got off Baiyi. Oh, uh, yes. Yahoo Japan Auctions is involved in this as well. And these are just three little Rothmans livery logos that are supposed to go uh, above or below the door card numbers for those kits. I got three sets of these because there's three Tour de Course Rally uh, liveries that at least that I'm aware of. Um, a lot of the aftermarket sets for Tour de Course and other things like that have these built into them already. These are legitimately just little supplement decals uh, for adding to the kit decals. So that's kind of a cool thing. Uh, I had looked and I thought for a second that I was going to have to buy a bunch of the Tour de Course versions of the Opal Manta to steal the Rothmans liveries out of those. I mean, that's something else I could do. I do want to collect a couple more of the Rothmans uh, rally liveries, but that sort of saves me from having to do that. Uh, from Hobby Link Japan, we, you guys knew this kit was coming because we showed you the detail upset in the last video a couple, uh, what, a month or so ago. Let me need to readjust my camera to get everything in here. And it is this. This is the latest, although it's a couple months old at that point, uh, new new hobby plats, however you want to look at it, new new hobby B-Max, BMW M6. This is the 2016 Italia Monza. That's apparently very, very confusing if you're given this kit for free. Uh, this is the Team Italia. Three hours of Monza race from the 2016 season. Comes with 2 one decals. These decals up here make your winning uh, car from the 2017 Bathurst 12 Hours, the race that's held uh, at Mount Panorama in uh, Australia. Um, that race is now part of another racing series, so the decals, the number cards look different uh, at this point. But that's uh, in I'm trying to do this without knocking everything over because I have the I have the, the M6 kits out because I have one of whoops sorry about my arm uh, have one of the things mocked up with getting the bumpers attached and stuff like that. It's one of the 
one of the things about, oh, look, cat inspection, he approves, uh, things about this kit is that the front and rear bumpers don't necessarily fit particularly well, uh, but it is really just a situation where if you build any kind of aircraft or armor or anything where you have to glue two halves of something together, that's the same kind of thing you use with this, where you just get it in place, you use a little t uh, Tommy Extra Thin, you know, the, the glue of the gods, as it were, and uh, <laughs> nothing's going on in focus, it's got too much stuff, too much to, too much to focus on, but... Uh, and you just sort of apply a little bit of it, get that part set up, apply a little bit more, get that part set up, apply a little bit more, get that part set up. And that way you just sort of apply it around the front end and the back bumper especially doesn't really like to fit. It's one of those deals where one half is, is uh, flush with the side, the other half is not. But again, tack one side in, let it dry out a little bit, glue the middle part in because it has uh, a little tab that it lose on to and then glue the other side on and just hang on to it and hold it. Like I said, if you built an airplane or if you watched anybody build an airplane, you know how you fix wing roots and joins of wings and stuff like that is by just uh, Tommy Extra Thin or if people, a lot of people have meth the actual legitimate raw methyl ethyl chloride stuff. Um, and that's how you go about that. So that's what we did here. It's a little bit more of a pain in the ass, certainly, than uh, getting this tacked up, which is, of course, the AMG GT3, the Tamiya kit. This fell together. Um, I almost wanted to stop what I was doing, gluing these things together just to build the Tamiya kit because <laughs> it fit together so well just right out of the box. But uh, these are our new blanks, basically, that we're going to be using for our new decal uh, business company, however you want to look at it. Um, it's called Lurking Cat uh, Productions, and right now um, we have at the printer getting printed right now fill-in decals to change this SK decal sheet, which is the Battlefield One livery that HTP Motorsports ran in the second half of the 2017 uh, Blanc Pain uh, season. It, it showed up uh, the race before the 24 Hours of Spa, and then raced this way. Uh, I don't know why, because glare and everything else. Come on, focus on me. There we go. Um, it ran this way at a number of races, the last four races, five races of the year. We created, legitimately we, like me, created new uh, number placards for this, for the 24 Hours of Spa, which requires uh, a slightly different uh, front livery package for these little associate sponsorships in front of the wheel here. And uh, you place a couple different of uh, these decals differently. The decal sheet um, is, I believe I priced it at $7, $8 if you're outside of the U.S. And you do need this set of decals. I did not redraw the entire sheet of decals. You buy this set of decals, you buy our little fix-it set if you want to, and it'll change this livery into the 24-hour spa livery, which is a minor thing, I realize, but the 24-hour spa car, a lot of people like to build specific races, and it was a very easy conversion. The other thing we did, which I don't have on hand to show you, maybe I'll, if I remember, I'll throw a picture of it up on the screen, is we created a... Uh, fix it livery for the Tamiya TS050. Now there are several companies that are offering fix it decals for that for the 24 hours of Le Mans car because the, you may recall the TS050 does not come with uh, decals for the 24 hours of Le Mans logos, the WEC logos, or anything else like that. Our decals are going to be uh, fix it decals for the rest of the WEC season. Um, that those are the other you know nine races of the year outside of the 24 hours of one, in which case delivery is a little bit different. So those decals are nine dollars if you're in the United States, ten dollars if you're outside. Again, if I remember, I'll put a picture up here. I say it a couple times so that if I watch this back, I'll remember to put the picture up. Uh, and then we're going to be doing other stuff, primarily focusing on GT3 cars. Um, obviously, and having these tacked uh, tacked together will let us uh, test fit the decals on before we send them out to the printer and things like that. So that's going to be very, very exciting. Um, of course, the time constraints on that are the same as I have with everything else. So I have um, a number of projects that I'm looking at doing right now as far as um, other livery sets. I have a couple of things that I will be doing once I get some stuff that Frankie is putting out of SK 
I have some variations on some decals that he has coming. And, uh, yeah, that should be fun. Should be entertaining. Which, uh, <laughs> you guys all need to buy stuff so that I can quit my job and just draw decals because it's far more enjoyable than my actual work. All right, so back to the model kits. Uh, this is the Toyota FJ Cruiser, the easy kit from Fujimi. This is another HLJ purchase. This is the one that's molded, and I think it's uh, just, like, pearlescent white or something like that. Um, I got it molded in white just so I wouldn't have to worry about what color I wanted to paint it. Um, there's like six or seven different colors of this kit at this point, but that's uh, in very nice kit. It's like 115 parts for a curbside. Obviously, a lot has to do with all the body panels being separate, but you get the general gist. Here's a little picture here, if we can get it to focus on sort of all the parts that are included in it. So quite a bit there. Uh, so that's in. Also in is this, the most recent uh, release of the Mitsubishi Gallant GTO uh, kit. This is the late version, 1976. So this has a uh, new front fascia included, uh, new bumpers front and back that have these little rubber bumperette extensions on them. Um, I think there's also, I believe the fender mirrors might be new. There's a couple of little pieces in the interior that are new. It is, um, I remember right, I've looked at it for so long. Yeah, this is molded in white, so you're not stuck with that being uh, in this weird sort of greenish-brown color. I guess technically it's more of a reddish-brown color, but there's that picture of the built-up. So that's in, and then we have also over on this pile that I need to put away is this, the reissue of the uh, Honda Odyssey Absolute from Aoshima. This builds in either an 03 or an 06, depending on which front end uh, combination you put on here. Now, very, very interesting about this kit is the fact that the bodies of them, the way they were tooled, are so different that there's actually two complete bodies in here. So, one of these is for the uh, older one, one of the new one. The, old, the new one has this sort of you can see here there's sort of a divot in the plastic that doesn't exist on this one. So this is actually actually a whole new body tool, even though pretty much they're identical otherwise. Um, it is one of those kits that you, uh, you know, get a painting uh, dummy, if you will, for when you buy. Because obviously you can only build one of the bodies with the included interior and chassis pieces. So that's there. And then the last thing is out of this little shipment of HLJ that's sort of hogging up space. Uh, I got two of these, and I talked about this in the last out-of-the-box video we did. These are the Italeri uh, Mark II Escorts. I told you back then I had gotten one in, and I had ordered three. Well, so I got the other two. I don't need to show you both. Uh, for the various uh, Royal Auto Club, the Rack Rally uh, liveries that I have. So those are in, and uh, I think I'm caught up on my rally kits, as you're going to see here in a second as far as, uh, you know, needing stuff in. Uh, let's see here. What else? I showed you this uh, just temporarily uh, when we talked about it on, a, on a, what, a regular stash report to, to just introduce the kit being out. So I have my copy of the Gazoo Racing TSO50. Uh, this is sort of an old kit at this point. It came out, what, May. Uh, oh, I know. I'm not paying attention. <laughs> um... So I don't really have a whole heck of a lot to discuss there, but I have one of those. I got my two copies of the uh, Ravel of Germany for GT Le Mans 2017 kit. I got these from Hobby Link Japan uh, because uh, it's still a pain in the butt to get this kit in the United States because obviously the United States got that reboxed version, which has the crappy, crappy decals. Um, now, you might say, well, I'm going to use an extra set of livery for this. I don't need those decals. That's fine, but the decals that are screwed up and missing out of this are a lot of the interior decals and the uh, various other pieces and parts that you would use off the decal sheet, no matter what livery uh, you're using. So, uh, I know Hobby Search just got these back in stock. I don't know if Hobby Link Japan uh, did or is or what. Uh, let's see here. Right, get stuff so it doesn't fall down. From Spot Model, we picked up this. This is the Bell Kits Ford Fiesta WRC, the World Rally Champion in Monte Carlo uh, winning 2017 Ford Fiesta. Uh, it's the Red Bull car. These decals in this are wild. They are rap. And I don't mean like that's the end of this video. I mean they are legitimately almost rap. You paint these, both of these, I'm going to show you another one. You paint these cars gloss aluminum, basically, gloss silver. 
uh, which is like this area of the car right here, and it sticks out a little bit back here, and there's a couple other spots where you see it sort of poke through, but otherwise, the li the livery for this these two, because I have the other one, I'm going to show you here in a second, are effectively um, wraps. <laughs> Let me get the decal sheets out here to show you. You have two decal sheets in this uh, in this set. One is this sheet, which has uh, these Red Bull liveries. You notice they're, they're metallic gold. That's really very cool. Um, and it has all of the sort of the Red Bull logos, and this has your tire logos, your seat belts, your carbon fiber uh, for the seat backs, a couple other things that are on here. They needed to be like really, really in your face, bright and shiny. And then you have this sheet, which is the wrap for the car. This has every single piece and part you need to have the car. You know, so the Red Bull things are like cut out on here because you're going to put the metallic bull on this side. The Red Bull logos are here. Um, it is wild. I have never seen this type of decal out of a commercial kit before. Most of the time, you know, you get some, get a few things here, a few things there, and you're, you're left to sort of uh, try to piece it together via two-toning and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, this is very interesting. Very interesting. I mean, they're cartograph decals, so they should be, you know, top-notch quality and things like that, but I'm very, very interested in that. And so the sister kit of that that came out a couple weeks later is this. It is the Tour de Course uh, MSRT uh, Fiesta. So this is the same deal. You paint the thing uh, gloss aluminum, and then there are, you know, a couple of decal sheets. I think there's only one decal sheet in here. It is a gigantic, I have to like sort of fold it a little bit to get it to go in. Up up here sort of has the same thing with the tire logos and the seat belts and this, this carbon fiber. And then there's, there's the wrap for the rest of the car. So... Yeah, it should be very, very interesting. It's one of those things where I think you actually get the 60 some odd dollars that these cost. Because the decals go on, you know, correctly and they, they don't, like, stink the joint up, as it were, then, you know, it's probably worth it in terms of the decals. I got a few kits here that I picked up locally from the local hobby shop. Some actual real life domestic kits. I know, what am I thinking, right? Um, let's see, the oldest thing I picked up, because three of these are still sealed, I haven't even been in them yet. Is this? It is the Mobius 66 Ford F100 flare side. I'm sure, a lot of people have seen this by now, so we're not going to go over it real hard. Uh, also, on the Mobius train, I picked this up, which is the 4x4, the 1974 4x4. If you've been looking for one of these and you couldn't find one for a reasonable price, it's because they sold out. They have reissued them. This is a reissue. So they are back in stores at their normal price. I have the uh, Fireball. Model Works conversion coming to convert this into the box art, the, two, the F200 or F250 that's on the box art. And then we have the most recent release. It is the 65 F100 service truck. This is substantially heavier, and for really what is about eight extra parts, it's ridiculously heavy. These 65 and 66 carry just a lot of extra parts that are not used in the actual models because they are using all the drivetrain and all of the suspension and everything off of the old ones, the, the old ones, the 69 to 72 kits. So there's a lot of carryover parts you don't use. So if nothing else, they're good parts, uh, you know, fodder or parts uh, locators. The, by the way, the 66, this is a six cylinder and I, uh, an inline six. And then the uh, service truck has a, what they're calling a 352 V8. Uh, it should also be noticed that this is a short wheelbase and that other one's a long wheel base. Also, one last thing before I forget about it, the service truck bed is an 8-foot bed, and it will fit any other 8-foot bed uh, Mobius kit. Obviously, it'll fit any 8-foot any bed pickup truck if you try hard enough, but you can put this on to the 1967, late 60s, early 70s uh, truck that was an 8-foot bed. And then lastly, we picked up this. This was one of the ones I was looking forward to getting that AMT is uh, releasing, and that, of course, is the reissue for the first time since 1979 of the uh, Subaru Brat. So, more proof that the Lesney, Lesney tooling from the Matchbox era did not rust to death on the docks of Baltimore, as the popular theory likes to say. Uh, we got a couple things here from uh, NNL least We didn't cover the last video. I picked this up by accident. Uh, this is the Enthusiast Series BMW M6 Hardage Edition from Fujimi. 
Uh, I saw this sitting with a bunch of other BMW kits, saw Hardage, saw the price, which was 25 bucks, and grabbed it. Bought it, walked away with it, and went, wait a minute, I have one of these already, don't I? I wanted the M5, which is the four-door, obviously, the 5 Series, because there is one of those. I thought that's what this was, glancing at it, and for the first time ever, I've accidentally bought a duplicate of something I already had. That's a little bit embarrassing. I managed to... Uh, all this time, never buy a duplicate by accident, not realizing what I had. That was more like my eyes glazed over, and I just grabbed it because I was like, oh my god, i got to have this. It's so cheap, and I want it, and then I realized it wasn't exactly what I wanted. Uh, the one other thing we picked up at NNL East, like, I like going to NNL East. It's a fun show, see people I haven't seen in a year and stuff like that, but it is really, 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 really heavily focused on the, what I would call the LUD contingent. <laughs> of the hobby, meaning it's a lot of old stuff that I'm not really particularly interested in. The only two things I purchased at the at that show, well, three things, I paid, four things. I purchased a can of spray paint, a set of decals for that I showed you in the last video, that BMW, which I bought by accident, so I really didn't even need to buy that, and then I bought this, the C1 uh, Models Trans Kit to create the 2002 Touring. Uh, for the Hasegawa 2002 kit. So this is a three-door hatchback version of the 2002. Uh, you get the body, you get um, sort of an interior and chassis piece to convert the back here, obviously, into a hatchback piece. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, there's a whole heck of a lot going on here. It uses everything else from the Hasegawa kit. But um, I didn't realize I needed a really fugly three-door uh, version of the 2002 until I saw that he was making these, and I was like, holy crap, I need a fugly version of a 2002 three-door. So I was happy to grab this. I mean, it was one of, they, he only brought a few of these over with him. I think he has them just in production on the website now, which is like C1 models or C hyphen models. You just Google it because I'm not sure what the actual uh, website is. There's a hyphen in it somewhere, and I'm pretty sure it's between C1 and models. Um, but you can order them straight from him. Great guy, great stuff. And, um, yeah, there's a, you know, sort of an alternative version on the box end there. A little, uh, not factory stock wheels look. So, anyway, that's that. <clears throat> From the folks over at Bai, I picked up a few things. So, like, first up is the BMW M5, the one I wanted. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> The Hardage H5, which is the M5 version of the Hardage edition. Basically, the only thing that's different between this and the M5 kit, which is readily available, Hasegawa, or Hasegawa, Fujibi reissues it every now and then, is obviously the Hardage livery, and there's uh, BBS wheels in this that are not normally in that uh, M5 kit, so I got one of those. And then while I was... And I think that was one of the ones I got here that I had to buy two things to get... So I wound up with one of these. This is an original uh, 19... I can't remember when this was supposed to be about. 1994 uh, version of the Carbon Ghia. I already have one of these in the more recent Rebox, the 80s masterpiece boxing from like the 2000s. So I don't need this one. Um, watch out, I may put some stuff up for sale on a video here pretty soon because I really legitimately don't need one of these. I need to check and see if there's any kind of resin Volkswagen stuff I'm interested that I can use the chassis and stuff from. Um, but otherwise, I didn't need this, but it came with that BMW, so I grabbed it because together they were like 30 bucks, so it was like 15 bucks a kit, so yeah, it was worth it. And then in another uh, set of kits that were like that, in the sense of being a twofer, um, I picked this up because it is the other M5 kit that I was missing, and it is the Alpina version of the M5. And <clears throat> I know that technically this isn't really technically an Alpina version. There's stuff about this kit that is necessarily because it is Fujimi, a compromise, but still, Fuj <laughs> Alpina. And then that came with this kit, which is the old, what they call the Ravel Advantage series, where the body is pre-painted in here um, for the BMW M version of the Z3 Roadster. Wow, that camera does not like all this red. But, uh, yeah, so this is uh, an actual, there's an actual, like, model kit in here. Um... As you can see here, there's a whole whole model kit in here, and then you have uh, this body, which again is pre-painted red, has the window mask done and everything. 
I haven't really looked at this to see if they actually sanded the mold lines off, and from like looking at it for half a second here, they clearly did not. Um, I'm not sure if this is actually painted or if it's just clear coated, um, but you know, it sort of is what it is. I'm not sure whose whose kit this is. This is. I mean, the way it's broken up it looks like a Hasegawa kit, but obviously Hasegawa didn't do one of these. Um, maybe it's the maybe it is the Tamiya kit with a few things to toss in because it does have like male wheel fitment, and there are poly caps in here. So it probably is the Tamiya kit with some maybe some parts that Ravel tooled into it, um, because obviously there's no such thing as a Ravel kit with poly caps. I'm gonna try to get the box back on here. It's taped on one side, and I don't feel like ripping the tape off. But anyway, so as I got this, my idea was to actually just steal the um parts off here and put them on the Tamiya kit. So, uh, yeah, you know, whatever. So there's that. Like I said, it was that wasn't a big concern in terms of purchases. I wanted the I wanted this one, and it just came with it. And the same sort of deal. I think I paid twenty five dollars for both of those. So it was worth it in the end. Uh, I picked up this Lancia 037. This is a recent reissue. Uh, but it's out of stock everywhere. <clears throat> I think it was. It's a. It is a limited edition. Hasegawa only runs so many of these when they reissue them, and I think that legitimately did sell out. This is the '83 San Remo Rally, the R6 car. Now this kit came from Japan with the Tabu Graphics upgrade, if you will, which is this, <laughs> the R6s. The decals as they come in the kit come with a sort of blank background that has no. Uh, actual R6s on it. I don't know if this is a rally where the car ran or not, which ran with it. I don't. I don't know if this is a picture that's like not from San Remo where the car didn't have R6s on it for some reason, or if they've actually gone through and photoshopped out. This sort of looks like it's like a bad Photoshop over the R6. But at any rate, the, it's just a little sheet of R6s to finalize out the uh, the actual livery. To be correct. This is the decal sheet that comes with it. You see, there's just blank sort of R6 shapes in there. So, at any rate, uh, you know, trying to get around the tobacco livery bands and whatnot. Uh, I also picked up this from uh, Bailly, and it is the Chardonnay version. This is one of the privateer uh, versions of the 1984 Tour de Course cars. Um, there's three cars that they did for the Tour de Course car. They did the Martini livery one, which is the one that actually won the rally. Uh, this kit, I th this car, I think finished fifth. I believe it is the highest finishing privateer car. And you can see on the box, here's like a blue little thing right here. That's where the Rothmans logo should go. And they don't include that in the decal sheet. I'm gonna pull the decals out here for you. So you see, there's just a bunch of 11s, and, the, and right up here, where this white spot is. Or, you know, they've got these little blue things. So you, you can see where they were intending to put Rothman's logos on here, or at least proximate, proximate, yeah, proximity, approximations <laughs> uh, of them, and they did not. I, I'm assuming they never intended to. I don't think these things, these, from looking at them, I don't think those kids ever had the correct uh, liveries in them, but or the correct logos in them, but eh, it is what it is. And we're almost done here, folks. Uh, one last box to look through. This is a Hobbyland Japan box. It came in probably two, three weeks ago at this point. This is the... Uh, actually, I was looking at it. It's in a bag. It's in a bag in a bag. They always Hobbyland Japan always bags your accessories up in a separate bag so they don't get lost in the box, which is nice. Anyway, so here's the thing out of the bag. It's the uh, Evo Sports 2 Detail Upset. So this is for the new... Uh, M3 kit that uh, BMAX did. Pretty much the same photo watch as the original, although this one has a uh, little sheet of carbon fiber in here for the rear wing. Uh, but otherwise, it's pretty much the same thing. It's got your, your antenna, your air jack, and your uh, seatbelt material. So there is that. Try to find a place to put this so it doesn't get lost. So that obviously means that we got the actual model kit, right? So. This is the newly released Evo Sport 2. New about this kit, uh, you get the set of uh, extra wheels that you don't actually use in this kit. 
Um, there is no version that I have ever seen of this Jägermeister car with these wheels. There is this aftermarket set of decals for the M3 that uses this set of wheels, but I already bought a set of scale production wheels for that kit, so it is what it is. You can see back here in this drawing, it's got the BBS wheels. You can see here on this side box, it's got the BBS wheels because it ran these BBS wheels, the same BBS wheels that the regular car runs. Um, the only other differences in these, other than obviously having two sets, of, two sets of new decals in here, is this is an Evo Sport 2, which was the last of these cars that ran in 1992 in Europe and then 1993 in Asia, in Australia. So if you want to build like a 1993 JTCC car or a 1993 Macau car, there's a livery for that. Uh, the Charlie Kwan car, which is a real sort of one-off uh, thing because the M3 which was underpowered compared to the other cars in the race, won that race, and Charlie Kwan is a uh, local Hong Kong guy, so it was a big deal at the time. But this has a different rear spoiler that has a much more significant uh, ducktail to it, if you will, compared to the regular uh, spoiler. And um, that's pretty much it. Otherwise, I mean, there's a, it has you use a different set of mirrors than you use in the uh, Warsteiner kit. But those uh, mirrors are included in the Warsteiner kit, so there's nothing about it that's uh, new. I do believe, however, if I'm not mistaken, although I could be, I'm trying to find the, the parts tree that has it on it was on it, the exhaust interior. Let me look, let me look. So that's the new spoiler. All right. No, that's the old spoiler. Okay, so it does, I was going to say it doesn't, but it does. It still does come with the earlier, uh, the earlier spoiler from the 1991 car. So you can build this backwards. That's cool. I was going to say, the only way to build this kit is obviously the 1992 series car or a 1993 Asia series car or Australia series car. But it does come with that, with the lower uh, spoiler, the one from the 1991 car. So you are set there. You do not have to only build this car one way. That's nice. It's blanked out on the on the instructions, but the part still exists, so that's cool. Uh, I'm glad to see they did that. Uh, let me see here. What else is in this box? We have the uh, reissue from Aoshima of the 2005 Toyota Alford. So this is a slightly different kit than the one that uh, Fujimi did of the Toyota Alford. And who doesn't need more minivans? So you could build this either as a... Uh, G or a V, depending if you want it sporty or luxurious. I think the only differences are um, the grills. <laughs> the grills are a little bit different. One, this looks like an Escalade grill. The other one looks even more like an Escalade grill, if you want to look at it that way. Uh, and then we picked up this, which is a recent reissue of the Toe Tip liveried uh, Jolly Club thing. This is another 1984 Tour de Course car. And so this is another car where uh, this livery they're showing here on the box is the uh, livery from the Rally Portugal, which you can have, but uh, also included is the Tour de Course livery, which you see has the photoshopped out Rothmans logo. So uh, you could build either one. I, I can't remember exactly how they finished in terms of positioning, uh, as far as the, the uh, positioning it got in the Portugal Rally, but you can see here you have your blank blue stripes for your Rothmans livery in here. Um, so there's that. Uh, that This was the second place finishing car in the Tour de Course, which is why I picked it up, because I'm not really a big rally guy, but you know, if I could build both sides of the, of the uh, podium, why not? I uh, picked up this because I love the uh, Esso the the Griffin, uh, Griffin livery of the black and the gold car. Uh, so this is a reissue, obviously, of the Lancia Super Delta uh, for the 1993 European uh European Rally. This is what the ECR is, the European uh, European Championship Rally Series. It is molded in black as far as the body goes, so there is that. But you're painting it black, so it means that's a terribly big deal about that. And here's your decals for that. You see, you get most of... Oops, that's upside down, I realize. <laughs> you get most of the gold. There's a few things on here you do have to paint gold. The decals don't quite cover, but most of the gold is... Uh, you know, covered by the decal sheet. So it's a nice set of decals. At least it looks like. Lots of decals are always kind of kind of iffy. Some sometimes they do their decals by cartograph. Sometimes they do them locally in Japan. I think these are locally in Japan as far as the printing goes. But it should uh, still be okay. The only thing I would worry about is you know the the gold not being quite dark enough to uh, you know cover the 
uh, cover it, so to speak. You know, basically shut the black showing through the gold. And then last last thing here is this this kit, by the way, along with the with the Porsche 911 GT1, and um, there's one other kit I can't think. Of. Oh, the TS the TS020. All of the several GT1 kits that ran Le Mans back in the late 90s uh, are now out of out of the Tamiya catalog in Japan. So they're 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 done. They but they did reissue them in a small little quantity right before they did that. So that's what this is. This is a brand new kit, not an old one. And it is the Calsonic Zanavi uh, car that they ran at Le Mans. Uh, I have, you may recall from the decal, the video I did before this, got the carbon fiber decals in for this. I almost bought this kit, the old, an older boxing of it, at uh, a show in Columbus back in March, but I could not for the life of me remember if I actually bought it or not. I was going to buy the kit and because the carbon fiber came out, and it was one of those deals where it's like, well, the carbon fiber is out for it, so I'm going to buy the kit. And then I decided not to buy the kit until I had the carbon fiber in hand, and then the carbon fiber, of course, went out of stock, and so on and so forth, and that's a sob story and whatnot. Uh, you do get the ability to build this uh, with three sets of drivers. Um, it all depends on which set of drivers you want to do. The uh, the number 21 car, which is not the one they show on the box art, I'm using, like, uh, got the pole position, and... Uh, yeah, you can build. Uh, I think the 23 car that's on the box is the highest finishing car. I will probably build this as a Gory Suzuka's car, which I don't think finished the race. That is this one, the Unixia Jex uh, Zexel uh, sponsored car. But uh, yeah, it'll be fun. I'm happy to have that. I think that's the last, pretty much the last of the Group C GT th GT1 uh, prototype kits of this nature. Uh, that the Tommy made, and uh, really wasn't too terribly interested in these. But I mean, the, the more I researched, the more I liked, and eh, it is what it is. You sort of end up buying things that you didn't think you were necessarily gonna buy off the top of your head, and that's how we wind up with you know hundreds of models, right? I wasn't gonna buy that, but so uh, yeah, there's my hand trying to focus the camera back again. There we go. Uh, that wraps this one up, guys. So I appreciate everybody who hung on. I think this is like probably close to 40 minutes long, but uh, hopefully you saw some interesting things there. Maybe some things you didn't realize, or I know a lot of people like to see the things uh, tangibly. I know like I've gotten a lot of comments from people about the regular staff reports that they appreciate. But I put the box art stuff up uh, so that people could know what they're looking for. So. At any rate, guys, I am going to, well, I'm going to go to work, and then I'm going to put the stuff away tonight so that I can have my bench and my paint booth and everything back, because <laughs> I have stuff everywhere, and none of it needs to be where it's at. And it's very claustrophobic, and makes it very hard to concentrate on working on anything, because it's just, oh my god, I get the stuff out of here, oh my god, I get the stuff out of here. So now I can get the stuff out of here. So I appreciate your patience. <laughs> anyway, like I said, guys, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you guys on the other side.